Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today we're going to debunk seven wine aging and cellaring myths. There's almost this mystery surrounding the idea of wine aging and it is accompanied by many misconceptions. It makes sense in a way because there really isn't any other agricultural product that can be kept for decades and during this time not only maintain its quality but sometimes even increase in complexity, show new flavors and overall give us completely different experience than when tasted as fresh as possible. Additionally, not all wines but certainly some might even see a tremendous price increase over the years spent tucked away in our cellars and wine fridges. However, as I mentioned before, there are few myths circulating the wine world and I want to break them. In the right conditions, wine can be stored indefinitely. Firstly, it is important to note that most wines are made for immediate consumption. And yes, those expensive bottles as well. While some wines can hold for several years and few can age for decades, all of these wines at some point will start to decline. This is when wine starts to lose its primary fresh fruit flavors and increasingly starts to develop vinegar-like and oxidized characters. No matter how expensive or great the wine was, every bottle will eventually end up there. Therefore, my advice is to find a moment to open and enjoy it. It will be much more pleasant experience if the wine is opened too soon rather than too late. Let me know in the comments if you have as well stored wine for several years just to open it later and see that it has gone. And while we're on the subject, every wine becomes better with age. Great wine is great upon its release. Quality-wise, it does not magically become better with age. Wine changes over the years spent in bottle, but if the quality was not there to begin with, it will never arrive. Bottle development most importantly affects tannins. They polymerize over the time, bonding together, creating longer chains. Thus, we perceive them softer and rounder on the palate. Wine also develops tertiary aromas as it ages, which manifests in non-fruit-like characteristics such as forest floor, autumn leaves, mushrooms, chocolate, smoky notes and the like. But bad wine will still be bad after 10 years in bottle. Harsh and green tannins will still be unpleasant, spiky acidity and burning alcohol will still be there. So if the wine is not good, don't keep it in your cellar. Cellaring is meant for good and great wines only. Wines with screw cups are not meant for aging. If the wine is good or great in quality, there is no reason why we shouldn't age it in our cellars, even though it is bottled under the screw cup. While I have yet to experiment more with red wines aged under screw cup, I have tasted quite a lot white wines. And most of them have been in a great condition, and those that have not, I doubt would have aged any better under different closure. If anything, I would argue that for short-term aging, up to 10 years, screw cups might work even better than the natural cork. The wines I have tasted showed still very fresh but more subtle fruit flavors, less oxidation and more togetherness. That being said, screw cups might not be the best closure for most wines though, for example for grapes sensitive to reduction such as Shiraz and Sauvignon Blanc. All wines should be stored horizontally. Contrary to popular belief, not all wines should be stored horizontally. In fact, some wines are best to store vertically. I mentioned this in one of my other videos and people really did not approve of it, even though there's a scientifically logical explanation. Yes, still wines, particularly those sealed with natural cork, are best stored horizontally to prevent cork from drying out. But sparkling wines, especially those expensive champagnes, are best to store vertically. This is because carbon dioxide or CO2 gas in the sparkling wines helps to keep the space between wine and the cork, which is called ouillage, moist enough so the cork doesn't dry out. In fact, cork is one of the main reasons why some wines will be faulty, often referred as corked wines. Therefore, keeping your champagnes in upright position limits the wine's contact with the cork, thus reducing the risk for it picking up the off flavors of trichloroanisole or TCA. However, storing wines in upright position is not the most space-efficient way. 
Therefore, I try to do it only with the champagnes that I intend to store for a long time. Only expensive wines will benefit from aging. This is tricky because it requires defining what is an expensive wine. For some it might be a bottle over 20 euros or dollars, for others it might be bottle over 100. Personally, I like to consider if I can afford a particular wine. For me, that would be 20, 50 or 100 euros. A 2008 vintage Salon Magnum, for example, is a category that I no longer can afford. Of course, in ultra premium and super luxury price category, it is easier to find wines with potential to age. However, there are also wines below 30 or 20 dollar mark that can stand test of time. You only need to invest more time in research and possibly wine tastings, which is the fun part. Regions and grapes that come to my mind are German Rieslings, Austrian Grunerwald Liners, Malbecs from Argentina, Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile, Chenin Blanc from Loire Wally, and Alianico from Italy. These might not be investment wines, but they definitely have the potential to develop in the bottle and bring us more joy years later. The wine fridge is necessary for wine storage. This is not true. It might be easier to control the temperature for your wines that way, but you definitely don't need to invest in the wine fridge to store your wines properly. What you do need is to find cool, dark and preferably dump shelf room or garage for your wines. If you have heated floors, don't store your wines on the floor. And if, just like me, you live in a northern area, make sure that the temperature doesn't drop below the freezing point. And if you need to store your wines outside of your home, it's a good idea to install a lock. As a rule of thumb, temperature should be steady and between 8 to 15 degrees Celsius. Although I have met a winemaker who stored his collection at 4 degrees Celsius. To keep the cork moist, perfect humidity would be around 70%. And if you want to protect the labels, just cover them with plastic food wrap. Excessive vibrations are considered harmful to wines, but especially so is the light. So keep your wines away from windows and direct light sources. And don't remove foils or papers on the bottles as they help to protect them. Different storing temperatures for white and for red wine. The reason why some wine fridges have two sections with different temperature controls is because the serving temperature for white wine and for red wine is different, not because the white wine should be aged in cooler conditions than the red wine. Therefore, if you do not intend to serve your wine immediately after you have taken it out of the fridge, there is no reason for you to invest in fridge with two different temperatures. The same goes for your wine cellar one but steady temperature is better. As I mentioned before, only good and great wines should be cellared. And if you want to know what makes wine great, make sure to watch this video.